Hi everyone, welcome to the second uh, weekly Painting Lab video. Weekly update, uh, episode five of Painting Lab will be coming, let's straighten you up, will be coming in just a couple of days. So as I said in the previous update, our episode videos are going to come hopefully every month and then these sort of more casual updates will come hopefully every week. Actually I've had a bit of downtime this week and I thought I might talk about how I've spent that time. Well the first thing I've done is I've shaved my beard off. Um, the second thing is that I've built a kind of micro painting setup which has allowed me to go around my house and begin to paint a series of little, I want to call them portraits really. I live in a, a, a cottage, a Georgian cottage, uh, well the front part's Georgian, the back part is anyone's guess, seven, eight hundred years old. I've wanted to paint pictures of it for years and never have and now I've finally had the chance. It's, uh, it's great, it's fascinating subject matter. Uh, the other thing I've done and thing I always do if I have a bit of downtime is I end up thinking quite deeply about what I'm up to. And what this has brought me back to is thinking quite solidly about what the comparator mirror actually does. What has all the data we've amassed on this channel over seven years told me? So before setting Painting Lab up, re relaunching the channel back in, when was that, October of 2020, I was actually preparing myself to study for a doctorate based on all the work that I'd been doing with the comparator mirror up to that point. And a good part of this involved uh, reading about, amongst other things, constructivist learning theory. So this can get wordy fast. I'm just gonna kind of skim over the surface of this stuff because it is actually fascinating. So the founder of constructivist learning theory was a guy called Jean Piaget. And he began a, a way of thinking about the way that we learn to learn, which has led to this diagram. So in the center here, as you can see, these are the things that we're familiar with and confident doing and perhaps even enjoy to do because um, we know them inside out. The portion outside of that central area is often called the zone of proximal development. These are the skills that we can just probably get our teeth into if we really felt motivated and we had a teacher perhaps with us to guide us. And then the outer rim, this is the place where things get really interesting. This is the zone of stuff that we might know we could never achieve, or we might not even know that we don't know it, because you can't know what you don't know, can you? And all of this has a bearing on what I've seen the comparator mirror do, what we've seen the comparator mirror do over the last seven years on this channel. What I think the comparator mirror does actually is take people from that outer ring and in just a few moments, transport those skills of realistic drawing and painting to that inner zone. And what that looks like in practice is <laughs> beautiful. And it looks a little bit like this. That's amazing. Is it? So what are you seeing in the mirror? I just see, I can see, I can see all the detail. I can see the shapes, I can see the colour, the tone. It just like, it brings it alive. So that's my neighbour. She didn't really know what I do. She's new to the neighbourhood. So what you're seeing there is her very first reaction to a piece of equipment she has no knowledge of. Uh, and uh, a conversation she's not aware of, but the device itself is making realistic painting and drawing clear in that moment. And that's why at the end of most Painting Lab episodes, I say something about the fact that when you guys get this device in your hands, that's the moment when Painting Lab will take off. Well, I suppose what I'm really describing in there is two things. Firstly, the sense that I want your stories, your unraveling of the problems of painting, particularly realistic drawing and painting, I want that to be painting lab, essentially. And the other thing that that means is that I need to resist doing all the conventional things that painting tutors do. I need to be very careful not to tell you that painting is easy. Painting is difficult. And as you'll see in the next episode, episode five, I kind of go into this in some detail. And um, I explain what the strategy will be to tackle the fact that painting is difficult. So um, 
Yeah, it's been an interesting week, full of discoveries and time to think and reflect. I think there's a momentum building in the channel at the moment. And I think had I not had this time to think, well, I could easily have taken a slightly conventional path that wouldn't actually have served what you want to achieve and what the comparator mirror is actually capable of. So uh, yeah, it's been very useful to sit and think. So if you've liked this slightly more academic, slightly more intellectual conversation about the comparator mirror, I'd be really interested to know. I've had actually quite a few emails from you presenting ideas at this kind of level about the comparator mirror. I'd love to dig right into um, you know, the theories of Jean Piaget and uh, constructivist learning theory and all the rest of it. And it's certainly the way that I think about what I'm doing behind the scenes. So if you'd like more of this on the channel, let me know. This, by the way, is a diagram that I drew up uh, as I was putting my presentations for my doctorate together. In it, we've got difficulty, accessibility, and we've also got uh, authenticity. What this allows me to do is place the camera lucida and the camera obscura and all the other optical painting aids somewhere on this graph. And as you can see, although they make the skills of drawing and painting accessible, they lack something in the way of authenticity. Now down here is conventional observational drawing and painting, very authentic. And with authenticity, of course, you get fascination. But cracking those skills open, so difficult, isn't it? You really need something right here in the sweet spot. And so far, what we've seen is that the comparator mirror sits in exactly that position. So there's plenty of food for thought there, at least for me. I hope uh, that this has given you some insight into the way that I'm thinking about the comparator mirror and painting lab in the background. If this is the first painting lab video you've seen, don't forget to check out all the other content which tries to open painting up for you before we release the comparator mirror glimpse, which is what we're calling it. If you'd like to get your hands on this hardware, and that is the essential bit of this equation, because then you will lead this story rather than it being up to me, you can go to paintinglab.com and you can sign up to our mailing list. And this means that you'll be amongst the first to hear when Tim and I release the comparator mirror. So uh, that is all for this video. Thanks so much for watching and for all your support. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. The notification bell is there. Please hit it because I want you to be aware of everything we're doing as we do it. And um, I will see you in just a few days with episode five of Painting Lab. <laughs>